Hi, I'm Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be making a couple of alternatives using the November 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit Jolly Gingerbread. Let me flip the camera around and show you what they look like, and then we'll get to the creative part. These two cute little house boxes to share with you that are alternatives for the November 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit Jolly Gingerbread. Let me set them aside. For the first variation on this box, I've got a piece of mint macaron. I will give you all the measurements for this and the scoring in a PDF that you can download from my blog, theartfulinker.com, and there'll be a link in the description below directly to that post. So I'm just going to go ahead and score. I have trouble talking and scoring at the same time. And then there's also, and telling you measurements. And so this way you don't have to stop the video and back it up to try and get the measurements as we go along. They'll all be written down for you. And you can see what my directions uh, mean when you have the PDF in hand. Okay, so we're going to take this and score for our roof. So you want to take this score line here and put it in at one and you can kind of see that one goes all the way down to here so that you know you're lined up on it. And we just want to put a, a little tick mark in the center there. And then we're going to turn this and put keep the tick mark in the track. And then where these other score lines cross, we want that to be in the track. And we can see that for sure. Let's see if I can pick this up and show you whether you can see the the crossing of the uh, score lines is right here in the track. So we're going to go from the center tick mark out here to where they cross. And then we're going to turn this. Again, that center tick mark stays here. And then we're going to put this crossing of the score lines in the track. Okay, and then we're going to come over and do the same thing here. So this score line will be on the one. And of course, one comes all the way down here so that you can tell. And we've got, I'm not sure I've got a center tick mark there. There we go. And then we're going to repeat here. Okay, let's put the trimmer out of the way for the rest of this one. And we're going to start with our paper snips. And here we've got this short section. And so you're going to angle cut here and cut up the end here. And then we're going to come in at an angle here. And then you're just going to cut right down this diagonal to that corner. Let me cut it loose instead of tearing. Okay. And then we're going to cut down here, just down to the corner. And then you're going to cut straight in here. Let's see if that's loose enough. Okay. And straight down here to this score line that runs horizontally. I'm just trying to see the score line here that I'm cutting down to the corner. And then we're going to cut here down to the score line and then here down to the score line. Okay. Put that out of the way. 
Next, we're going to do our stamping. And I'm going to bring this down towards the bottom so I don't fight with the lights here as much. And I've got a couple of pieces of scrap paper that I'm going to put on. This one is for a mask. And the one I'm using at the bottom is more as a guide. Again, with the lights here, it's a little harder to see. You don't need this piece. This piece you do. So I've got a piece of, I've got my Just Jade ink pad and the cute little house from um, the Jolly Gingerbread Paper Pumpkin Kit from November. And I'm just using my ink pad carefully along the edge. You can do it with your spot as well that came in the kit and not inking the chimney. So my scrap paper at the top is just in case I do ink the chimney. Now using the paper at the bottom as a guide for the score line and then the piece at the top, we're going to see where my side score line is and put this right in here and give it an all over press and time to transfer that ink. And there we have our first house. So let's ink that up again, and we're going to stamp it in the other large section. Just making sure I've got plenty of ink on this. This is a one-time one try. It's not like um, putting it in your stamparatus and you can do it again. Okay, so let's line up my mask at the top and my guide at the bottom so that I can see and I'm looking for my score line down the side whoops and if the mask isn't straight the house will not be straight okay so give this an all-over rub and hold for a moment to let the ink transfer and there we go those are pretty good not perfect but that's okay we're stamping this is not machine made. Okay, let me close up my ink pad and put the stamp out of the way and we'll finish our cutting. So we're going to lightly miter the bottoms here. This one is a straight cut and then a miter on this side of the tab. This one is a straight cut and a miter on this side of the tab. Okay, and then before we burnish all of our score lines, I have the Small Bloom Punch. It's in the annual catalog, and I'm going to just cut a little notch in the end of both of these tabs. So I'm just pushing it up to see if I'm kind of sort of centered, and it makes a nice little little notch there to grab the opening. So let's take the bone folder and start and burnish score lines. So all four of these at the bottom are going to come across. And then we've got a short tab. And each one of these folds, burnishing the score lines, helps a, a box hold together better and then both of those. Okay, and then I've got my multi-purpose glue. So we're going to put a little bit on the short tab here and then bring our box around and let me put a finger inside here and you just want to make sure that you are, whoops, not doing what I just did and let your box flap open. Okay, so you're going to put this together and give it a hold and you're lining up your score lines and not coming past the edge of your box here. And the multi-purpose glue gives you a second to check all of that since it's not permanent on contact. Now I'm just going to put my bone folder inside and give this a little bit of a 
a rub to make sure it's all adhered. And then let's turn this over and I want my two short tabs inside. Oops. And we're going to put a little bit of multi-purpose glue down in there and fold the mitered side of the box in. Normally this is where I would hold it slightly off the edge of my table, but we can't do that because you can't see what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to turn this over and put the end of my bone folder in here and rub this back and forth all over to make sure that all of those layers we've just glued are adhering. And then finally, we'll just fold these two little tabs down in and we've got this cute little house box. Okay, so that's one with a pointed roof in mint macaron. Let me set this aside and we'll make another one with a different roof line. And for the second box, I've got a piece of Coastal Cabana, and we need to do all of that scoring again. And again, I will have measurements for all of this on my blog in a PDF that you can download so that it's super easy for you to have watched the video and grabbed the PDF, and then you can make these boxes also. So just a few quick score lines with your paper trimmer, and away you go. Okay, so next I need to do our diagonal scoring again, and I just need to think here a second about where I'm going with this. Okay. And then we need to hit the other side. And then I can turn these and get my diagonals in here. Let me make sure I'm seeing that score line up there. And then turn this so that I'm coming into the corner. Okay. And then, let's see, we need to go trying to find my mark here. Need a tick mark here. And then right here, and then we're going to give us our diagonal lines again, making sure I've got that corner pulled into, into the track here. Okay, that's one, and then got to slide it down a little bit and to get the other one so that we're not running into the top of the trimmer. Okay, now we're cutting. Grab my paper snips here, and we're going to take this piece off, and we're going to take this piece off, and then I'm going to cut down the diagonal score line here score line, easy cutting, let's pull these out, okay, and then let's go ahead and pull that trimmer back in for one more set of cuts. So we're just going to take a little bit off of the two roof pieces here and make sure I'm going to start right at the score line here and come to this score line. Okay. 
and then the same thing here right at the score line and come to the edge so we're giving it a shorter roof okay and now we need to do our stamping so I have my Jolly Gingerbread House and this time we're going to use the Bermuda Bay ink let's set up our pieces of scrap paper here one as the mask for the roof and then the other is my stamping guide. Again, you won't need this one at the bottom. You'll be able to see your scored lines. Okay, and again, we're just tapping on the ink here so that we're just below that little chimney piece. And let's hold these and Come right next to the score line and put that down and give this a rub all over. Okay. And then we'll ink up one more time and we're almost done with the second house. Okay. Let's push this back into place. These little houses would be great as favors on a holiday table or create 25 of them for an advent uh, calendar and fill them with little treats, whether those treats be activities or actual little gifties. Okay, let's put my Bermuda Bay ink out of the way and my inky stamp and finish our cutting. So we're going to go straight here and then come and miter a little piece out and then miter this edge. Mitering just helps our box fold together more easily. And straight here, the reason I'm leaving the one straight is because it will be the front of the box. You sort of have to decide that before you start cutting your tabs. And what that means is it will be the piece that folds from front to back and so you want it to be nice and straight. Okay, so time to burnish score lines. Let's do this four along the bottom here. Okay, and then before we fold the rest of the box up, we're going to use the small bloom punch again and give our these pieces a little bit of a tab hold makes them easier to open okay and now let's finish here and then these will fold down but not our roof line pieces okay let's do our multi-purpose glue and line up the sides of our box, checking score lines top and bottom so that they're lined up and that we haven't come over the edge of the box. I'm just holding a second and then going in with my bone folder to burnish. And then let's put our short tabs in and add our adhesive. And then the first of our long tabs and then a little bit along that edge. You don't wanna put your adhesive all the way out here. Put it on the edge of the one that's going to fold across and that way you know you won't have any glue showing. Just rubbing here to make sure it's all adhered in there. And then fold our tabs down. And we have a house with a little gable roof and then our house with the pointed roof. And these will hold something like a, a Ghirardelli square, more than one, quite easily. Or I'm sure you can come up with lots of other fun ideas for these. Thanks for stopping by. This was Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker of theartfulinker.com. You can subscribe to Paper Pumpkin with me using the link below. Just choose me as your demonstrator. 
Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this alternative project. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell if you'd like to be notified the next time I upload a video. And of course, have a great day. Bye.